Hey guys, it's Andrew with GY6Vids. Welcome back for part two of the ceramic plate ballistic testing. Today, in this video, we're gonna be testing back face signatures. So the impression that what happens on the backside of a ballistics plate after it's been shot. Everyone tests, does it penetrate? Does it go through? Most of the time they won't because these things can't leave most factories until they've passed the tests. So most of the time, yeah, it's gonna do its job here. But not a lot of people in their videos test back face signature, which is very important. Because when you're carrying this thing around, not only do you have a lot of weight on you already, so you're carrying around these vests, but if it's pushed into your chest here and you're pressed right against that plate and back face signature's deep enough, it could crack your sternum, break ribs, cause internal organ malfunction, blunt force trauma, it could stop your heart. We'll be using a depth gauge today, so once we hit the plate, the back face signature is gonna bubble out and push into the clay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure from the reference point, which is the start of where the plate, back face of the plate is here, onto the clay. Then from that reference point, we're gonna measure to see how far it goes into the maximum indentation into the clay. That's gonna determine how far it would press into your chest. Now granted, your chest, you know, it, it compresses quite a bit. Uh, that's why you don't die when somebody does CPR on you, but you do get cracked ribs sometimes in CPR because of that compression onto your chest. But this one's not just push, it's just bam, you're getting hit. Plus, it's leaving that indentation. So if you have this vest on nice and tight, you don't want it to be bubbled out too far. That's a problem. So this test is important. People need to test this when they're saying if a plate is good or if a plate is bad, because most plates will stop around. Uh, NIJ considers a ballistics plate to be okay when it comes to perforation testing, as long as everything's kept inside this. The back face signature could be that far off and they're still gonna say, hey, it passed. But back face signature testing is very important and nobody really ever shows that. They go, oh, there's bulbing, there's bulging on the backside, it's gonna be okay. You never know. So I wanna use this clay. We're using the depth gauge. I'm also gonna be taking temperature with a temperature gauge, making sure the clay is the same temperature every time I shoot it. That way, it's staying consistent. And I, yes, I have a heating pad. It's on a heating pad right now, actually keeping warm. That way, every time it gets shot, the clay is the same temperature. Science. You can't do all this stuff without proper equipment and doing it the right way. Don't half-ass things that you're telling people are gonna save their life. It's not the way I like to rock and roll. So just like yesterday's video that you saw for the perforation test, we're gonna shoot the 5.56 armor piercing rounds onto the level three plus plate. Um, obviously, we found out yesterday that armor piercing 30-06 boom, just goes right through the damn thing and there's no resistance whatsoever. So we don't have to really judge back face signature because you'd just be dead. Um, but we will be testing quite a bit of 5.56 armor piercing to see how every shot starts increasingly getting worse or if it stays the same. And the level four plates, we're gonna shoot with the 30-06 round, see how well it does in the back face signature, and then we're gonna shoot it second and third time and see how it does. And if it's still the same, and not a lot more uh, indentation, then we're just gonna follow up with just a ton of shots of 5.56 five, and see what happens when it keeps getting nailed by a more standard type of caliber, 5.56. Five, so, enough talking guys. I think you guys get the point of the video. Let's get into it. Right around 96 to 97 degrees Fahrenheit on all edges, which is just what I'm looking for. So we have shots here, shot here, and a shot here. Um, they're within about an inch and a half, two inches apart. And judging by the video yesterday, part one of this, we knew that about four or five shots in, the back face signature was next to nothing. So I took three shots instead of one, and they're pretty close together, so it'll give us more of an idea of what it's gonna look like. All right, so back face signature, no perforation. So you can see the back face signature laying itself into this clay. These are three shots of 5.56, 5, 62 grain, 2,800 feet per second projectiles hitting within an inch and a half to an inch apart from themselves. A reference point from right here, it's touching both ends of the clay that it's not indented in. We have zero. 
We're going to push in here and see what we got. We have 0.15 inches at the highest ridge. 0.44. So just under, in three shots, we have just under a half inch of indentation, which is not bad. I mean, that's moving your chest only about that much. You get more when you have CPR. So that's really good for three shots in the same spot. Uh, I'm gonna shoot around the targets already hit a bunch of times and then come back to that spot with multiple shots. That way we can judge the difference in back face signature with bullet on bullet impact. We're gonna leave that section right here because that's the deepest point, point four four. So these are pretty close for armor piercing, 5.56. Five, we have another shot here, another shot here, another shot here, and then bottom right and left. So here, and they're all within about two inches to three inches of the edge, which is fine. And then the plates up here. I'm staying away from the top because the level three plus plates, they have rounded edges here for comfort wear. Um, but I don't want to get too close to that edge either. So right there, let's see what the back face signature looks like. Let's pop this off. Yeah, we're running right in. The 93 degrees, 94 degrees. I'm gonna put this back on the heating pad before I do the 30-06 to get it back to 97, 98 degree range. All right. Oh, okay. All right. That is significant. <laughs> um, the plate, the sections on the bottom are taking some traumatic pressure on the backside. Um, there is no perforation. The panels themselves are cracking open because I'm in within, that is about an inch away from the edge. So that's really close to the edge. So to not even have perforation on the edge, that's freaking awesome. I like it. And there is material from the plate coming out, but it's not projectile. Trust me, if you see a round pass through on this and hit clay, it goes, it's pretty cool. It kind of reminds me of the shots on the T-1000 in the old Terminator movies when the, uh, Metal opens up when it gets shot. It's exactly what it looks like. Set the side real quick. And let's get some measurements. And we have five, four, seven. So we have 0.547. So just a little over a half inch of back face signature, which is not too far off from the first one. Now let's go down here. So we have 0.547 on that. We're gonna move down to this one. The damn it right on the edge, pushing in further. So we have 0.547. On this one, we have 0.856. If we keep shooting this thing, it's gonna perforate, it's gonna blow through, and it's gonna jack this uh, clay block up. I'm gonna reface this thing real fast um, and then shoot it with the 30 out 6 with a level 4 plate. And at the end, we're gonna have a little fun, GY6 style, and just keep shooting the hell out of the level 4 plate until it blows through. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you get full perforation of a plate. Uh, a little bit different than this, to tell you the truth. So I'm gonna flip it around the backside, hammer it out, make sure it fits for the little four plate, and let's get down there and we'll have at it. All right, so we have the plate carry here with the level four plate underneath, right on side the ballistics clay. The temperature staying right around it within plus or minus one or two degrees. The NIJ standards, it's gotta stop one 30-06 armor piercing round. Uh, and if it stops it, which it did yesterday, no problem whatsoever, uh, I wanna see what the back face signature is, and then we're gonna follow up with two more shots. Then after those two extra shots, we're gonna hammer away with some 5.56, five, 62 grain armor piercing rounds we did on the level three plus plate, and see what happens. If it still doesn't penetrate, I'm just gonna go hog wild with an AR-15 with a regular ball ammunition, and uh, just bang, 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 until it pushes through. It shouldn't take too much more. All right. Let's get into it, enough talking. You guys have heard all the details already. Uh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> All right, so as you can tell right here, we have the impact dead center on the plate. It is the same distance apart. I measured on both sides of the plate itself. It may be off by a little bit, but not by much. Damn near dead center. Let's pull this off, see what we got. 
Yeah, temperatures within plus or minus one degree still. All right. This is what's nice about back face signature. On the back of a plate, you'll be like, oh, wow, there's, there's nothing. You'll be fine. And you look into the clay, and it shows this. So that gives you an example of, because I'll show you the plate right now. I mean, it's nothing. Uh, I mean, it's a little bulb, very little. But on this, it shows the kinetic energy being dumped into its target. And that's what's nice about back face signature testing with clay, is it gives that example. And you can even see the impression of the mesh on the back of the holder or the carrier. Pretty interesting. Let's do a measurement real fast. That way we can get into the more interesting stuff of the second and third shot and then blast away with it with the 223. Okay, so from our original reference point to our furthest indentation, um, we're getting 0 0.406. That's nice. We're gonna leave that there. We're not gonna depress that anymore. We're gonna keep the where it is. We're gonna put this plate back up. I'll shoot one high and then one maybe off to the left or right of it to see what happens when there's a shot closer on it. Um, see if we get some perforation or uh, massive amounts of back face signature. Let's take a peek. Oh, so I uh, impacted him. Get back up here. Impacted about three inches above my intended target. And look what's right in the middle. La la. I'm gonna set that aside. Ooh, that's hot. Holy hell, it's hot. Um, friction causes heat. And when something's moving this fast at 2,700 feet per second and stops instantaneously, there's friction and that is hot. I'm gonna set it aside and I will talk about it later. Cool. So three inches apart. Uh, I don't think there's any perforation, but that is fine. We'll check that in a second. I'm gonna shoot another shot about down here. So it'll be one, two, and three to see how it does. That might have been like within, <laughs> that might have been about an inch from the first shot. So I didn't see a lot of wiggle. We might have put around right. <laughs> right through the plate. If it stopped it, I'll be very impressed. I shot about half inch to an inch higher than I wanted to, so damn it. Let's take a peek. If it stopped it, I'm gonna be pumped. Blew through. Yep. Woo! Dude! So, uh, that's not good. <laughs> All right, so as you can tell, we have first, or first shot right in the middle. What that does is the ceramic inside tends to start cracking, so it kind of weakens the plate. Second shot up top, two to three, about three inches apart. It was, felt fine, we'll see here in a second. I don't think it did anything, it looked like it stopped because I actually got the whole round right here. Um, so I know it didn't go all the way through. Third shot, I was wanting to shoot here, and I hit about inch and a half, blah, about an inch higher than I wanted. But on the back side, there's really no need to explain or even ask if perforation happened. <laughs> I'm sorry, doctor, I don't think he's gonna make it. <laughs> this gives a great example of what happens when a round enters, enters a body and then exits. Tiny little hole entrance. Big freaking hole on your backside. So as you can tell, it's just exploded out the backside. The plate must have been broken up enough to the point where once the round passed through, it just, whew, there wasn't a lot of resistance for an armor piercing round. So that shows you the amount of kinetic energy this plate is stopping on the first shot, especially, and then the second shot. And if it wasn't so close, I'm guessing even three shots. Let's pull the plate off and see what that second shot did with back face signature and measure that compared to the first one. All right. Holy crap. All right, so I'm doing the temperature reading again. We're dropping about five six degrees right now, seven degrees, since the last shot of when that full perforation happened, which was awesome. Gosh dang it. The one time I didn't have the camera on the backside, <laughs> the action happens on the backside. Okay, let's pop this off, enough talking. Let's get a back face signature reading and then move on from there. I think if it was 
not so right on top of itself like that third shot was, it probably would have stopped the third shot as well. It was doing very, very well. But when a round impacts that close to an already busted up ceramic plate, you're gonna get perforation. It's bound to happen. But that is the trade-off though of doing steel body armor to ceramic. Steel is gonna have more longevity. It's gonna keep getting shot and shot and shot and shot and shot. And you're gonna see um, a longer wear and tear of that, but you're getting a lot of slash. If you get shot five or six times in steel, that slash is gonna go up in your face and down into your legs, and you're gonna be bleeding pretty bad with all that fragmentation. With this, you're getting fine powder of some ceramic, but nothing like violent, violent. So, uh, and it's going pretty much out. It's exploding this way from what I can see. There's nothing really behind the table or around it on the sides, which is what we wanna see. Um, fun little fact, so, but, First, second shot, if you're getting shot with 30 out six and you're not going ah, and like trying to run away, you're probably deserving to die and it's, I guess, uh, nat natural selection <laughs> and it's the world getting rid of you. All right, moving on top. Yeah, we're looking at about uh, 74 degrees, 73 degrees. Um, that's a tremendous drop from the last shots. But good thing, oh, that looks so cool. Good thing is that the next shots, we're looking for full perforation. We're not looking for proper measurements like we just did on this NIJ testing. Um, so we don't have to worry about the temperature anymore. I don't have to keep throwing this damn thing back onto the heater. Saves me some time and some trouble. We're just gonna shoot this thing until it dies. You can clearly see <laughs> something wrong with this picture. Yeah, it's like a birdhouse. <laughs> But this shot's very intriguing because this one was about two and a half inches higher than the first shot. And let's measure that real quick. Okay, we got zero reference point, as you can see. La -da. I think you can see that. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. It's zeroed out. Now we're gonna go off reference point here, touching each edge, going to the deepest section, and pushing in. We're hitting the deepest point of that second shot where it was two and a half to three inches away. And we're getting 0 0.711, so uh, 0.7 inches, 0.711 inches to be exact, of back face signature, which is not bad. I mean, you're less than an inch of compression into your chest. I mean, and for your second follow-up shot of 30-06 at only 50 feet of armored piercing ammunition, only going 0 0.711 into your chest, I'll take that any day. If you're not running by shot two and moving like a mother, you deserve to get a round put through you like that. <laughs> but I think that if that was even a little bit lower, we'd have the same result. We'd have the same 0.711 down there as well. The plate, you don't have to see it. It's got two indentions like the first one was and this one. And then the hole is obviously just a hole uh, going right through. So, but I can feel that the edges are still pretty hard. I'm hoping the ceramic will stop the 223. No more technical talk. Let's destroy this thing. Going live. Yeah, I put them in pretty much bullet on bullet <laughs> or bullet within an inch. So definitely not going to that two inch section. Let's go take a peek. This is pretty incredible, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I was expecting perforation on the backside. Um, we didn't get any perforation. Um, I do wanna see what the back base signature looks like, so let's pop this off real fast and take a peek. One last time, I just wanna see, I know you guys are tired of all the technical crap, um, but it is good information to have. So if you did get shot with a larger caliber round and you had a level four plate on and you got shot, you're like, oh, you don't have to worry about, oh crap, it's not gonna handle anything else. It could still be effective, so it might be worth keeping on rather than popping your plate out and throwing it away, which a lot of people talk about doing. Oh, I'll just throw it away once it's perforated, you can never use it again. Well, if it gets perforated, obviously you're gonna be dead, but if you have a shot placement on it that stops it and you're survived, 
even if the ceramic is jacked up, you can still stop rounds. Clearly, there's, we don't have perforation, but let's see what the back base signature looks like. Ugh. Oh. Maybe we do. Maybe we do. Um, yeah, it looks as though we have perforation. But it looks like it didn't go fast enough. Wow. It must have gone fast enough to get through, but not fast enough to go through the clay, which means the round had to been traveling pretty damn slow after it exited the plate. It only looks like one round popped through. Because I put, I mean, this was bullet on bullet, so I'm guessing one, two, three, four, five. I think on the fifth one, it probably pushed through because that does not look like two perforations. That's one. Unless multiple ones went through. Let's see. I could be wrong. Nope. I am not wrong. I am actually right. Yeah. So on this plate, we have where it was sitting, obviously 30-06, 30-06, 30-06. We have one, two, three, four, five shots of 5.56 five, in this little section on the edge. So that's even on a weaker section of it. And we didn't get perforation even at the top where I hit. So we had passed through on one shot, but that was the shot that was right above the 30-06. So the perforation happened right above within a half inch of the 30-06 shot. So in the corner, they did fine. They stopped all right here. Huh. Interesting. But the one that was right above it went through again. So the full metal jacket 55 grain round, so I'm about to dump into this thing. I'm going to try to work my way around the edges to see what happens. I'm going to do 30 shots, so I'm just going to walk it around. Um, you guys can see where the perforated sections are. One at the top, one at the bottom. Um, we can go off that. All right, let's shoot the crap out of this thing. So we got 30 rounds. 55 grain, 5.56. Five, it's gonna be fun. Let's get into it. that 30 shots 556 five, 55 grain ball i have no clue what it looks like on the back but i'm sure you guys do with the gopro let's go take a peek <laughs> well okay yeah this is what you would call complete and utter destruction of a ceramic plate <laughs> that was fun 30 shots i put a lot up through here and a lot down there and once the ceramic stuff starts flying out i mean you're damn near just shooting through hollow points in the entire plate so it's null and void at that point but it's fun nonetheless hopefully the gopro photos look cool for you guys hope you enjoyed it let's pop this off real fast just for giggles the plates toast and the clay as you would expect is jacked up the bottom stopped about four or five rounds because i shot it down here and there's nothing yeah there are no perforated points on the bottom so it does stop as long as you're not hitting on completely fractured sections that have already been busted through uh does decently wow inner that's impressive <laughs> 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 
probably not good to breathe all this in. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you got some information out of this. Hopefully it was very uh, eye-opening about ceramic plates and body armor themselves. Oh, Armorware.com, you gotta go take a peek. The link's in the description of the video. And soon to come, bulletproof underwear. This is gonna be interesting. Always protect the family jewels. <laughs> this is Andrew with 2 6 vids I will see you next week. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe to UI6Vids. New stuff coming every week. Thanks for watching.